God bless your family. This is Pastor Larry. As we always say, this is the day the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. I want to say God bless you and thank God for you all being a part of tonight's Bible Institute and our Wednesday night uh, time in the Word of God. Listen, once you come on in, like, share, and subscribe to our page. Y'all forgive me. I was distracted for a minute right there. But come on in and uh, be a part of tonight. Listen, I believe it's going to bless your life for the better. All right. God bless you. Stay tuned for a great word from the Lord on tonight. God bless you all. Glad you all are back. And as always, welcome to tonight's Wednesday night edition of Moments in the Word, which is commonly called our Bible Institute. We bless God for you all being here. Listen, want to give some quick shout outs. Hey there, my mother. God bless you, dear. Love you. Good to see you tonight. Lady Starton, I see you. Uh, Pastor March, God bless you, sir. Lady March, I see you there. Auntie, how are you all? Sister Olivia, God bless you. Minister Gina, uh, Brother LT, Sister Michelle, I see you there. Sister Barbara, I see you. Sister Annette, I see you. Tommy, all right. Marie, I see you there. Minister Karen, and all of you all who are on the line tonight, we bless God and thank God for you all being here on tonight. As always, welcome to the place where change begins. We are changing lives that will ultimately impact the world. And to all of you all who are on our virtual outlets, we bless God and thank God for you being a part of tonight's conversation. Won't you contact Pastor Larry, all right, at momentsintheword99 at gmail.com. That's momentsintheword99 at gmail.com. I would love to hear from you, all right? That's momentsintheword with an S at gmail. I'm sorry, momentsintheword99 at gmail.com. Or call our prayer line 
at 773-785-0412. That's 773-785-0412. That's the number to our ministry. Or you can call our online number, which is 708-821-6527. That's 708-821-6527. Now, what I would love for you to do is to please like, share, and subscribe to this lesson. All right. Pastor, why is that? Because when you like us or love us, at least we know that you're there. When you share our page, you can invite more people to be a part of tonight's lesson. All right. And when you subscribe, it will ping your device, whether you're on Facebook or Instagram or YouTube, whichever one you subscribe to. When you do that, it will notify you that we are on live and bringing you some new content for that night. All right. So please, ma'am, please, sir, wherever you are, please like, share, and subscribe to our page. I promise you it will bless your life and bless us. All right? Want to join, join us for this month of reading through the scriptures. We are reading through the book of Romans and the book of 1 Corinthians. That's the book of Romans and uh, the book of 1 Corinthians. Today should be the third chapter of the book of Romans, all right? If you are following following along, uh, but Pastor, I missed a few days. Well, you know what? You can always backtrack. But today we are in the third chapter of the book of Romans. Man, what some good reading. And I believe it will bless your life for the better, all right? And so continue to be a part of our time and moments in the word as we read together through uh, the Bible, all right? And so God bless you and thank you so much. Listen, once you join us on Friday morning, you don't want to miss Friday morning at the 11 o'clock hour. We are going to be in our time of Sunday school. If you love Sunday school, want to get some notes, some nuggets, whatever it is, meet us this coming Friday morning at the 11 o'clock hour. All right. And be a part of Sunday school and then come and join us on Friday night right here uh, on this stream at 7 o'clock uh, p.m. as we dig into the lesson in, uh, in depth and in detail right here on that Friday night. All right, listen, if you don't want to miss it, I promise you it's going to be good. It's going to bless you. It's going to inspire you. And as always, it is our endeavor that it will increase your study in the Word of God. All right, let's pray. Let's dive into the Word. I am so ready. Come on, grab some paper, uh, ink pen, and let's dig tonight into God's Word. Father, tonight, thank you again for this time of sharing your word. Father, tonight, as always, I prepare. So I pray tonight, God, that you would prepare the heart of the listener. And I pray, God, all those who are watching, you will open up their ears and let them hear the voice behind the voice. We bless you. We thank you. And give your name maximum glory. It's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Family, come on, let's go. You know where it is. Romans, the fourth chapter. Let's, let's dig tonight. Romans chapter 4, look at verse number 19. Romans 4, look at verse number 19. Are you there? Let's go. It says, and being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead, when he was about 100 years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able to perform. Man, I love this passage of scripture. Family, all right, let's get back to our lesson tonight. In case you're keeping count tonight, we are in lesson number six in our series uh, entitled Overcoming Obstacles That Obstruct Abundant Living. Overcoming Obstacles That Obstruct Abundant Living. Tonight, we want to revisit you all and uh, uh, take our journey that we, we began a few days ago down the path to getting our life back. Uh, Pastor, what do you mean getting our life back? What I'm saying is that so many Christians, you all have lost their weight due to the unforeseen or even the seen circumstances. And those circumstances have caused some to give up and quit on God as though they were hopeless 
in, in a hopeless situation. Now, this is important because the enemy has a way of blowing things up in the minds of the children of God. And he understands that if I can cause you to feel as though you are in a hopeless situation, that there, just, there is just no way out. He will cause us to quit and give up, up on God and literally lose our lives. And family, listen, I realize that if there's something in my life that I can't change, since I can't change it, all God requires us to do is repent, right? Once I repent and try to make it right, once I've done that, I've done all I can do. We must pick ourselves up, pull our lives back together, and move on with our lives. Because what the enemy would love to do is shut, shut us down and cause us to miss out on the very thing God has ordained for our lives. Pastor Larry, what do you mean? What God has ordained for your life is so valuable and it is so important for our lives that if we allow the enemy to distract us, allow the enemy to keep us from walking out the thing God has ordained for our lives, don't miss this family, then we are literally, uh, I won't use the word no good to, to the kingdom of God. But what it does is it keeps us from being as effective, hear me, from being as effective as we can. And so you and I, and Mother Sergeant has got it right. We must stay focused on what God has said and not on what we're seeing or what we're going through. We have to stay focused. And this is one of the things the enemy you all is shutting us down. Because as we explained to you on Monday, anytime you and I lose our focus and lose sight of where we're going, we give the enemy the advantages in our lives. Hear me. And what you don't want to do is ever give Satan the advantages in your life. I know I don't. I don't want to ever give him the uh, upper hand in my life. And so as often as I can shut him down, I want to make sure I do whatever it takes to keep the enemy from winning. Right. All of us should want that. We should all want to do whatever it takes to win. Come on. I know it's early. But somebody put in the chat room. I want to win. Come on. I need at least 10 of y'all put in the chat room. I want to win. And understand, this is what God wants us to do. The father, he wants us to win. He says, man, all things, we are more than conquerors. And the devil does not care what he uses and who he uses to bring distractions. Oh, that was good. I'm going to say it again. Your adversary, the devil, who, who the word says, come in as a roaring lion, does not care what he uses or who he uses to bring distractions in our lives. And so if you and I don't maintain our focus, hear me, he will make you feel like you're in a hopeless situation. And oftentimes we find ourselves in uh, a retreating uh, posture. And God never gave us a, 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 a armor to retreat, right? All the armor God gave us are, is armor to cover our front, to protect us, the head, the, the breastplate. Yeah, all the armor is to protect us from the front. You know why? Because God never tended for you and I to retreat, which means that God then God wants us to win in life every time. I'm going to say that again. That was good to me. That God wants us to win in life every time. You know, and I know if I would ask you the question, if I said, how many of you have ever found yourself in a situation where you feel hopeless? Every hand in the chat room would go up. If tonight we were in a sanctuary and I was asking the question, who here tonight has ever found themselves in a situation where you thought all hope was gone? Right? And every hand in here would go up. I see Pastor Marks put in the chat room. He says, trust in the Lord with all thy heart. That's absolutely correct. This is what God wants us to do, to trust in the Lord with all of our heart and lean not to our own understanding. In all our ways, acknowledge him and he will direct thy path. Uh, Proverbs. And so understand, but when you feel hopeless, when you are in a hopeless situation, the enemy has a way of keeping us from trusting God because that's what hopelessness is. 
when someone feel hopeless, they don't trust God. They don't trust themselves. They don't trust nothing. And all of us have been there when we say, God, now what? This is why we have people, you all, who are committing suicides by the droves. Oh, dear God, over this year, just this year, thousands of people have committed suicide. Older people, younger folks have killed themselves. You know why? Because they felt hopeless and helpless. Listen, I don't care what goes on in your life. You are never without hope. Jesus is your hope. Uh, someone wrote a song some time ago and said, Christ is the answer. Child of God, believe me. Christ, in fact, is our answer. And if you and I don't make him our answer, if we don't make him our choice, the enemy will try to wear you out. Look at what, what the Apostle Paul said in Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. Look at what he says. That's Galatians 6, verse number 9. Watch this. He says, and let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Man, another powerful scripture. Watch the implication here. The first thing, the implication here is, if the opportunity to get weary will show up. God already knew that you and I would always have opportunities to get weary, right? The Bible says, don't get weary and faint in your, watch this, faint in our mind. And this is where the devil attacks us in our thought life, in our thought process. This is where he wants to tie us down and tear us down in your mind. Pastor, what do you mean? The devil, you all, is the, 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 the grand prince of rewind. Pastor, make that make sense. He will always remind you of your failure. He will always remind you of what you didn't do right. He'll always remind you of something you said that may have been negative. He'll always remind you. He'll always play back in our minds the things we did wrong. Consider this. He never reminds us of what we do right. <laughs> Glory to God. The devil never reminds us, you all, of what we do right. And he's always in attack mode trying to tear us down, to wear us out. You see, and so God had the Apostle Paul post this in there. He says, don't be weary in well-doing. Because what he does is he plays the rewind of our failures and our past. Listen, you can't erase a mistake. You can't erase a bad decision. You can't erase something that has come out of your mouth. Those things you can't take back. All we can do, as I said earlier, is repent and ask God for forgiveness. And then watch this. Not only must we trust God to forgive us, but you must learn how to forgive yourselves. Oh, come on. Tonight, I'm talking to somebody tonight. You must learn how to forgive yourself. I can't tell you how many times guilt and condemnation has come over Pastor Larry's life over some things I've done, I mean, dear God, years ago. But the enemy says, look at you trying to, trying to preach faith and preach Jesus Look at what you've done. And so what I do is I remind him of where he's going. I remind the devil of how he was already in heaven with God, act the fool, and got kicked out. And then I remind him when it's all said and done, his behind is going to be cast into the lake of fire. All right? I make sure he knows where he's going. Because here is the reality. No matter what I've done, when I die, I'm going to heaven to be with Jesus. Once I repent and get my heart right, I'm going to be with God. He can never be saved. All right. And so, listen, so you can't allow the devil to play rewind in your mind. You got to make up in your mind that once I ask God to forgive me, I got to let it go. Give it to God. And then watch this. I must forgive myself. Now, here's why that's important, because people may never forgive you. I'm going to say that again. People may never forgive you. I can't begin to tell you how many times folks talk about, you know, forgive, forgive, forgive. They'll preach it until the offense is done, the offense is done to them. All of, a, all of a sudden, forgiveness goes out the window. But you and I have to walk in forgiveness. Watch this. Jesus said this. 
He says, they shall know that you are my disciples by the way you love one another. Now, question, why do you think Jesus found that important to say that? He understood that having the disciples, all these men had different personalities, different cultures, different thought processes, and that they were not going to always see things eye to eye. But he says, even when you don't see eye to eye, never fall out of love. And here's you all is what I've seen during this dispensation. People falling out of love. I mean, dear God, families falling apart. Church folks falling apart. I mean, over the, the smallest things. You know, they had an old saying when I was growing up. Why make a mountain out, out of a molehill? And this is what's going on, you all, in Christendom. We are making mountains out of molehills. And instead of walking in love, we tear folks down. We tear down each other. And watch this. We forget that the person we're tearing down, don't miss this, is still a gift. The Bible says, whom God called, he justifies. And whom he justifies, he glorifies. God never called us to to bring condemnation upon nobody. God is the one who called every gift. He says, I bring one up, I set one down. And our job is to have the ministry of reconciliation. Oh, dear God, I am so far off the lesson now. But God has called us to the ministry of reconciliation. In other words, God knew, God knew before we messed up. God said, I know you ain't nothing but dirt. Come on. All of us are nothing but dirt. All of us have things we pray to God no one ever found out about. Every, every one of us. A pastor, not me. You just told a lie. Everybody listening to my voice right now, all of us are praying, God, leave this under the blood. The other day I was talking to uh, Mother Sergeant, and, and uh, we were discussing the Bible. I said, you know what? I'm glad God said confess your faults and not your sins. God says confess your faults one to the other that you may be healed. In the effectual fervent prayer of righteous man, I made of much. God said my fault, not my sin. My sin, I confess to God. And the Bible said he is faithful and just to forgive and to cleanse from all unrighteousness. And so then if God is faithful and just to cleanse me and forgive me, listen, man, <clears throat> we must then in turn forgive ourselves. And so Paul says, don't get weary in well-doing. For in due season you shall reap if you faint not. Now, let's look at what Jesus said, you all, on this same matter. Look over in Mark's gospel, Mark chapter 10. Look at verse 29. Mark 10, look at verse 39. Watch this. And Jesus answered and said, Verily I say unto you, there is no man that has left house or brethren or sister or father or mother or wife or children or lamb for my sake and the gospel. All right. No man. Here's the promise right here. Verse 30. But he shall receive a hundredfold return now in this life. Oh, somebody should have been shouting right there because right there is the promise. But he shall receive, verse 30, but he shall receive now, in, right, now in this time, houses and brethren and sistering and mother and children and land. Watch this now with persecution. Oh, wait a minute. He says with persecution, which means folk going to attack you. Come on, listen, because people don't want to see you blessed. Folk don't want to see you prosperous. They don't want to see you growing in, in, in the things of God, not only in wisdom and knowledge and revelation, but don't want to see you grow as a person. You know, some folks have what's called the crab mentality, that every time you go up one level, they pull you back down because they don't have the initiative to grow. And so they want to make sure you stay at least one step lower than them. The devil is a liar. God said 
He said, I receive a hundredfold right now, which means then I don't have to wait to the sweet by and by. Oh, good God Almighty. So the Gloria, I don't have to wait until I get to heaven. God said, I'm going to do it to you right now. Come on. He said, I'm going to give you houses, brothers, sisters, mothers, children, and land. But here is the kicker right here. Somebody ain't going to like you. Come on, somebody. Somebody's going to hit on you. Somebody's going to say you're stealing God's money. Somebody's going to say you're doing something crooked to, to advance. No. What causes us to advance is that we obey what God says. But y'all watch this, and then I, I move on. He says, with persecution, and in the world to come, don't miss this, eternal life. Oh, what a promise from God. Not only do I get the hundredfold return, but God says, I get eternal life. So what is Jesus saying? What he's saying here is, is that I am going to give you back everything you lost for my sake. Woo, good God Almighty. Everything you lost for the sake of the kingdom of God and for preaching Jesus Christ and him being crucified, he said, whatever you lose for my sake, I'll give it back to you. Woo, come on. I need 20 of y'all in the chat room to put in the chat room and say, I'm going to get my stuff back. Oh, yes, amen. God's going to give you, give it back to you. He said, I'll restore unto you the years that the pomegranate and the canker worm has taken from you. Good God Almighty. That means God is getting ready to give you your stuff back. Come on. Oh, my God. Somebody ought to be shouting right there that God is about to restore to you everything you thought was lost. The stuff you thought you would never see again, the stuff you thought was gone forever, God said, I'm giving it all back to you. Why? Because it came because of what you suffered for his sake. Now, the stuff you lose because you make dumb decisions, God may or God may not, may not give, give, give it back to you. He's not obligated to because the stuff you lost because of your not obeying God, that's on us. Now, can God restore it? Yes, he can. Come on. Look look, 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 look what, what David lost, but God restored him. Look what Samson lost, but God restored him. Can God restore you back? Yes, he can. Yes, he can. Is he obligated to? No. Not when you lose it because of your foolishness and disobedience. Come on. Right? And so our job is to make sure we keep ourselves focused and do what God has called us to do. To make sure that God keeps us in his perfect will. So now, let's follow now our train of thought on how to get our lives back. All right? Let's follow this train of thought on how we got here on how we should get or can get our lives back. Don't forget, we were over in 2 Corinthians chapter 10 in verse number 5. All right? Let's look at it again. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, look at verse number 5. Now, Bible says here, he says, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalt itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. All right? If you and I are going to get our lives back, I gave you three things we have to do. All right? I said, number one, we must deny doubt, the right to set up residence in our minds. We must deny doubt, the right to set up residence in our minds. I said, number two, we must make the decision and refuse to embrace the images the devil plants in your head. Oh, that's, that joker ain't no good. I almost call him a sucker. <laughs> but that devil is no good. He is always planting images. He is the author of images. He wants to play games in the imagination, right? Because he knows that if I can see it, if I can see it, you will believe what you can see. And if he can draw you in, with an image. Come on. You look up and now he's got you. Right? Because he plays games in the mind. And that's what the devil wants to do. Get over in your head. He will make you see yourself divorced. Make you see your kids being on drugs and being out there on the street. Make you see yourself losing a your house, losing a your job. Make you see yourself not being the person 
God wants you to be. He'll make you see yourself being a failure. He is the master of imagination, of imagery to plant it in our mind. We must make sure we cast those thoughts down and don't embrace, uh, embrace what he plants in your head. Now, on Monday, I gave you point num number three. I know by now you should have written it down. And here is point number three. I said, we, we need to familiarize ourselves with the will of God. I'll say it again. We must familiarize ourselves with the will of God. Pastor, where is that in the text? Watch this. He says, casting down imaginations in every high thing. Watch this. That exalt itself against the knowledge. That's the will, the word of God, the knowledge of God. In other words, the only way we can challenge what the devil offers us is to know what God has set in place. Hear me, family. The only way you and I can properly challenge what the devil brings to us in our minds is to already know what God said. I'm a, that was good. I'm going to say it again. The only way we can be effective at challenging the devil and what he offers is to know what God has already set in place. Watch this. Write this down. A thought not immediately challenged has the potential to be embraced and cause unwanted side effects. <laughs> Ooh, that was good, y'all. I'm going to shout right there by myself. I'm going to say it again. It said a thought not immediately challenged. In other words, whatever you and I don't challenge right away, it has the potential to be embraced and cause unwanted side effects. You know, taking medication. Have you ever watched a commercial on TV and they said it was for this or for that? But then they said this medication may cause this. It may cause all these side effects. Well, the medicine fixed one thing, but it messed up something else. Watch this. When the enemy brings a thought in our hearts or our heads, if we don't challenge that thought right away, that thought is a seed, right? And carry the potential if we embrace it to grow. If it grows, what happens after that is that it causes unwanted side effects. Let me give you, see, you can't watch pornography all day. Pornography will plant a seed in your mind. Once that seed is planted, the Bible says it brings forth, uh, produces lust, and lust brings forth sin. Sin brings forth death. You can't sit up and watch uh, this stuff on television, these scary movies, because now you open the, door, the avenue for fear. To come up, to come up in your mind, and now here it is. You're jumpy all night long. You're jumpy. You're afraid. Come on, can't go to sleep. Having nightmares. Well, it's because you embraced it, and now it's producing in your life and giving you unwanted side effects. You can't meditate and harbor anger in your heart on what somebody has done to you. Here's what it does. It doesn't. You get, you get angry. Now you're mad. Now, now you imagine what happened, and in your head you play it over and over and over again. And now your your blood pressure is elevated, your heart is palpitating, you almost live in a state of hatred for the person you're mad at. And now you're angry and, you, and you're in a rage, and the person you're mad at is not even in your presence. And now you're angry, you're messed up, you're fussing at your wife, you're fussing at the kids, you're beating the dog up. You, you pour all, all the water out the fish tank and killing the goldfish because watch this all because of what the devil put in your head. You're getting all these unwanted side effects. See, the devil can only tempt us to embrace the thoughts. Hear me. That's where his temptation lies. He can only tempt us with the thoughts when you read your Bible. He brings the thought. He brings the thought. He brings the thought. This is why God says casting down 
the thought, the images in your mind. Watch this, words, thoughts carry images. Once the image is there, our job is to tear down that image like a fortress, tear it down, rip it down, get rid of it. Why? Because if we don't, it will then begin to control our lives. And so the devil can only tempt us to embrace the thought. And watch this, that will somehow give us the advantage when we're looking at it. When we get the thought from the devil, the devil now steals the advantage. He now has the advantage over us when we embrace his thought. And now we all have the potential to look for a path of least resistance. Pastor, what, what are you saying? The enemy can only tempt us, you all, with what we like. I'm going to say that again. He can, temptation is not a temptation unless he's tempting me with something I want. I want, right? And so when I'm going after a thing that I really want, even if I know it may not be the right thing, I choose the path of least resistance. Let me see if I can make it make sense. When a person wants to get married, and they say, well, I want to get married, but I ain't sure if it's the right one. And so they choose a different path, the path of least resistance. I won't get married, but we'll, we, we will live together. In the old school church, we call it shacking. Woo! I don't, 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 y'all stay there now. Come on now. Don't leave me now. Come on. We call it shacking. And so we'll choose to live together. Because living together is a path, the path of least resistance. While I'm not married, I will live like I'm married until I decide to get married. No. Because what, what, what that does is, is it opens up an avenue of, of distrust and disobedience to God. Right? Because now, if I marry you, I don't trust you now because now everything we've done, you know, we know already it was wrong, wrong to do. You don't believe it? Come home late one time. The, the thought process will, will be, well, if you did it with, with me, they'll do it with somebody else. And the enemy knows how to put thoughts in our minds. That's my point. See, watch this. You recall in the garden, in the garden, the garden of Eden, it was natural that Adam and Eve didn't love God. The Bible is clear. They were deceived. Holy Eve, Eve was deceived. But the temptation took the path of least resistance. Right? And while they were deceived into disobeying what God said. Understand, they wanted to be more like God. God said, in the day you, you eat of the fruit, you shall know good and evil. Well, watch this. The devil said, or the serpent said, that God know that you will be just like him, knowing good from evil. Well, watch this. They want to be more like God. And so they chose the path of least resistance, which was eating the very thing God said don't eat. How many of us have done the very thing God said not to do? Why? We chose the path of least resistance. I'll tell you why. Because in James 1, 14, watch this. Here is temptation. James 1, verse 14. It says, but every man is tempted when he is drawn away, watch this, y'all, of his own lust and enticed. You can't be tempted with what you don't want. Come on. Pastor Larry, don't do drugs. Not done drugs. You can give me a room full of whatever the most expensive drug is. I ain't going to take it. I barely take an Advil. <laughs> Free plug, Advil. I barely take that. I don't like medication. So you can give me a room full of drugs. I won't touch it. Matter of fact, I'll leave the room. But if I'm not careful, the devil knows what pushes my easy button. And there's some things you put a person in the room with 
that they'll bow to it because it's a temptation. And watch this. We generally take the the path of least resistance. Let me give it to you, the same verse in the ICB translation. Look at what it says. It says, it is the evil that a person wants that tempts him. Oh, watch this now. It is the evil that a person wants that tempts him. His own evil desires lead him away and holds him. In other words, it grips him. It causes you, watch this, puts you in a what, what we call in Christendom a stronghold, right? And so many times it is a stronghold of the enemy that keeps us from walking out and living out what God has told us to do, right? What God has called us to do. And so when you and I begin to get ourselves familiarized with the word of God, now we have something to fight back with. Here you all is my whole point. When you and I become familiar with the word of God, when the enemy comes in and attacks our lives, now we have a fighting chance because we're fighting with the word. You know, over in Mark, I'm sorry, in Matthew chapter four, that same devil who tempts us or the same devil that tempted Jesus. Watch this. Look over in Matthew, the fourth chapter. Watch this. Look in verse one. Matthew chapter four. Look in verse one. This is good, y'all. It says, when Jesus, it said, when Jesus led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Verse two, and when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterwards and hungry. In other words, the devil attacked him at his weakest moment. Look at verse three. And when the tempter came to him, he said, Watch this, you all. If thou be the son of God, command these stones to be made bread. Now, watch this. He had fasted 40 days, fasted 40 nights. He was coming down. He was starving because the body, the body goes into starvation mode in, after 40 days. So here it is. He's, he's coming out of a dry place. He's hungry. He's weak. The devil says, I got you now. How many times? Had the devil caught you at your weakest moment, at the point you were most vulnerable? Come on, some of you all may have, uh, maybe you can't sleep at nighttime, up all night worrying for, for, for any reason. I mean, had a fight at home, up all night, you're weak. Come on, had a, a, a fallout at work, up all night, worrying all night, and now you're weak and you're vulnerable, and the devil brings the very thing in your life that he knows will tempt you. You know, for some folks, it's alcohol. For some people, it's, 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 it's a, a, a man or a woman. For some folks, it's drugs. Some folks, I mean, some folks is cussing somebody out. But the devil knows what your weakness is. And no, have you noticed, whenever you are most vulnerable, he tempts you in the same area every time. I'm sorry. When I'm most vulnerable, he tempts me in the same area every time. You know why? Because he knows that when I am weak and at my most point or at a low point of vulnerability, he says, I can sneak in right here and catch him right here at the lowest place of his life. When you're empty and depleted of the virtue, when you're empty and depleted of your strength, the devil says, I got you now. But look at Jesus, you all. Look in verse four. Jesus says, it is rich Look at what you did. Jesus hit the devil with the word. Oh, come on. He did not fire back at the devil in his flesh, but he swung back with the word. He said, devil, wait a minute. It's written. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. When the devil brought bread, Jesus, who is the bread, brought the word. Oh, good God Almighty. I'm going to say that again. That was good. You better preach, Sergeant. Think I will. When the serpent came to tempt Jesus with bread, Jesus gave him some bread. Come on. Jesus, who is the bread of life, gave the devil some bread. He said, devil, hold up. Wait a minute. He said, it is written and told him what the word said. 
Man can't live by bread alone, but by every word. Right? He made him understand that yes, while what you're saying is the path of least resistance, instead of yielding my member and obeying you, I'm going to give you what God said. Right? And so he gave the devil the word. But watch this, y'all. The devil didn't stop there. Look in verse 5. Then the devil took him up to the holy city and set him on a pinnacle of the temple. That's the high place, you all, of the temple. And watch this. He said unto him, if thou be the son of God, cast thyself down. And y'all watch this. That joker tried to be slick. He says, for it is written, he shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Guess what? The devil gave the word the word. Come on, somebody. That's in the book of Psalms. The devil gave Jesus the word. Can you imagine? He challenges Jesus. He says, if you are indeed the son of God, then jump. Now watch this. Had Jesus, you all, been full of pride? Because right here now, God is allowing Satan to, to find out if Jesus is full of pride. Because he could have said, oh, let me show you. I am the son of God. And get full of pride and jump. But watch this. Look at what he said in verse 7. He said, <laughs> wait a minute. It is written again. Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Oh, good God Almighty. Y'all, Jesus knew how to take the devil head on. Which means that every time he comes at us with a temptation, you hit that joker with the word. Y'all, and watch this. You would have thought. After the first time he was done, verse 8 says, the devil took him up to a high place on the mountain. And watch this, showed him all the kingdom of the world and the glory of them. Which means he showed him all the wealth and the riches you all of this world. Can you imagine everything he came for? Come on, everything he came to, rede to redeem man back for. The devil showed it to him. But look at what Jesus said to you all in verse number nine. He says, all these things, the devil said, will I give thee if thou will fall down and worship me? You mean no cross, no suffering, no nails in my hand, no scars, in my, no, no, uh, 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 scars on my back, no piercing in my side, no thorns on my head? No nails on my feet, no being uh, having my bull, my, my uh, beard pull. Come on, no being punched in the face, no being spat upon, no being ostracized, no being criticized, no being have my back. Uh, uh, someone turn their back on me. You mean I can escape all this drama by simply bowing down? Listen, you all, that was a path of least resistance. Jesus had an opportunity to get everything back. All he had to do was bow down to the devil. But look at what he said. He said, get behind me. Oh, he said, get thee hence, Satan. In other words, get behind me. For it is written, watch this, you all, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only Shall thou serve? Watch this. Jesus says, my heart is fixed. You know it. Come on. And my mind made up. I will only serve Jesus, only serve God. Woo, come on. I wonder how many folks in the chat room will put in the chat room, I will only serve God. Come on. I wonder how many folks right now I can get that put in the chat room, I will only serve God. Come on, it don't mean I won't be tempted, but I will only serve God. Doesn't mean I won't have struggles, but I'm decided I will only serve God. Come on, how many folk have made up in their mind that no matter what goes on, I will only serve God? Oh, good God, I'm right, Monty. I see.
Pastor Newman said, no rooms, no vacancies. I'm all filled up. I know that's right. My room is full, glory to God. What there's no occupancy. You can't come here. I'm I, I'm I'm packed. I'm jam-packed. Every room, every crevice is full. Here's my point. You and I must keep our lives full of the word of God. I'll tell you why. Because what you don't know will kill you and brings grave side effects. Look at verse 11, y'all. It says, then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. Which means, y'all, the devil came and hit Jesus with his best shot. Oh, yes, he did. And that's the same thing he's doing with you and I. He's hitting us with his best shot. I see mother said, all sold out. I know that's right. But when your heart is fixed and your mind is made up, that I will only serve God. And that's where our minds that you all must be. I will only serve God. I know I'm tempted to do other things, but I will only serve the living God. Why? Because it is the living God who is my strength. It's the living God who is my source. It's the living God who is my foundation. It's the living God who my way maker. Come on. It's the living God. So I will only serve God. Oh, praise God. Remember now, the enemy only has the advantage when we don't know God's perspective concerning what the enemy offers us. That was good. I'm going to say it again. The enemy only has the advantage, only has the advantage when we don't know God's perspective concerning the thing the enemy offers us. Listen, once you and I know God's perspective on a thing, the devil does not have a chance. In other words, when you and I can see it from God's perspective, are you following me? When we can see it from God's perspective, man, the devil don't stand a snowball's chance. Why? Because I'm looking at looking at things only from God's point of view. Consider this. What if every time you and I were in a temptation or a test or a trial, and we before we made a decision, we asked the question, what is God's perspective concerning this? Come on. When my mind is all messed up and the devil is saying, well, go ahead, go to the club and get a drink. Yeah, that sounds cool. It sounds cool going to get a drink. Because after all, once I'm buzzed, hey, man, my buzz gets my mind off what I'm going through. But what if I say or ask the question, what is God's perspective on this? Now, if you're drinking, I'm like Fred Price. I didn't say your name. <laughs> God bless his, his heart. Apostle Price, God bless his soul. And so, listen, the enemy will, will, will use a crutch. He'll say, get high and forget all your trouble. How many folks can testify that I don't care how high you get? I don't care how drunk you get. I don't care how much sex you get or engage in. When it's all said and done, when it's all through, your problem is still there. Woo! Come on, somebody besides your pastor. When it's all said and done, everything that caused us to disobey God, that problem is still right there. Come on. It don't go away. It don't. We get a temporary satisfaction. That's why we have to keep on getting drunk and keep on getting high and keep on getting uh, drugs and keep on having uh, 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 all this outside affairs and can't because we want to get these things out of our head. And so we replace it with these other outside things. No, child of God, run to God. Hear me, run to God. He's waiting for us. Run to God. But Pastor Larry, I don't see God. I know that. But guess what? He's in you. In Colossians 1, 20, I believe it says, it says, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Run to him. 
Oh, I can't begin to tell you how many times I wish I had ran to God. How many mistakes I've made because I didn't run to God. How many times I failed and messed up because I did not run to God. Listen, if you want to, listen, if you want to know about potholes, I'm a dude. Talk to me. I've been in a, a thousand potholes, over a thousand potholes. And believe me, I got scars to prove it. All right? I got scars to prove it. Here's my point. There's some potholes you and I don't have to fall in. Right? Let's learn from other folk mistakes. Because God wants us to live that abundant life. Come on. Let, let's move on. Write this down. What we don't know or embrace from God's word can cost us everything. Oh, I pray y'all got that. What we don't know or fail to embrace from God's word can cost you everything. I can't begin to tell you how many folks who's lost it all because they didn't embrace the word of God. I'll prove it to you. Look at Hosea chapter 4. Look in verse 6. Come on. Are you all still there? Come on. Ooh, the chat room stopped moving. My stream stopped going up. I don't see no likes, no hearts. Oh, dear God. Hosea 4 verse 6, you all said this. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Watch this now. They are destroyed. Underline destroyed for lack of knowledge. God says the reason you are messed up is because of what you don't know in his word. Not only what you don't know, but because of what you didn't embrace. Let's keep reading. Because thou have rejected knowledge. Ooh, come on, somebody. God said, I will also reject thee. Now, it's one thing to reject God, but what I don't want is God rejecting me. Beth Larry why? Too many side effects. Come on. God says, thou shalt be no priest to me. God says, because you reject me, God says, I can't use you the way I want to. Come on. I can't put the glory that I want to in your life because you reject. See, one thing I always tell our church, we think that because God will give us what I call a temporary anointing, that what we did or the stuff we're engaged in is okay. Listen, many times God will anoint us because someone else needs the message. And what, what we'll do is disregard the message because of the mess the person is in. But it is very possible. Oh, I'm sorry, not possible. It is a fact or a truth that the message is still valid, even if the messenger is jacked up. I'm going to say that again. The message of God's word. God's word does not change. The message is still good. The message is can still be used. The message is still powerful. It's still God's word. Even if the messenger, the person who brought it, is messed up. See, watch this. When we see David, David did a whole lot. That boy had issues. But the message was still powerful. Jonah was a disobedient prophet. But he preached and the message was still powerful, and the Ninevites, uh, Ninevites repented, right? Moses killed a man, but the message was powerful, <clears throat> even though the messenger was messy. Watch this memo. God does not have a messenger that's not messy. Woo, let me bust your theology. God does not have a messenger that's not messy or have ever found themselves in a mess. And so let's get off our high horse. 
that I've never done nothing wrong. Everybody has sinned. Pastor, not me. Then, then you're calling God a lie. Because the word says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The word of God said, if any man said he have not sinned, he's a liar and the truth is not in him. Now, you can't take that out the Bible. Here's my point. God says we're destroyed for a lack of knowledge and because we have rejected him. He says, I'll reject you and I can't use you to, to the degree I'd like to. He says, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God or the word of God. But then here is the bad part. God says, if you forget me and my word, God says, I'll also forget your children. Woo, dear God. You can't pull that out the Bible. And so many of us, y'all, our children are suffering. Pastor, how is that possible? Watch this. If we don't obey what God said and we forget the word of God, if we don't obey the word and don't teach the word to our children, our children then follow in our footsteps. Oh, dear God. Question. If your children serve God the way you serve God, then how will your children serve God? Ooh, I'm going to say it again because my time is almost gone. If your children serve, were to serve God the same way you serve God, what kind of servitude would they be given to God? Come on. If your children got in God's word the way you did, would your children be in God's word? Because it's possible to get in God's word and still do something foolish. Because watch this, God does not control our discipline. Watch this, God puts discipline in our hands. He says, the word will, the word of God will renew your mind. But the word of God does not control your discipline. Discipline is a choice. Because God will allow what you allow. Will somebody come on and get it tonight? Don't worry, y'all. We'll, we'll shout next week. All right? We'll shout, I tell you what, we'll shout Sunday. All right? But listen, if we're going to move and begin to live that abundant life God calls us to live, what I don't want is God forgetting my kids because of me. Because if I don't get into the word, then my children never see me in the word. And so they'll think that, watch this, what you don't want to have is a church life and a home life. In the church, I'm spiritual. At home, I'm a heathen. At church, I'm, uh, at, at church, I'm shouting. I'm praising God, speaking in tongues, teaching the word. But at home, I'm getting drunk, getting high, and doing all the, come on. I'm doing all this other stuff, and so I'm sending my children mixed signals, right? Y'all, guess what? God will hold us accountable for that. And what I don't want to see is my kids miss God because I gave my kids mixed signals. signals. And so I endeavor to be the same person in church and at home, right? I'm a fun person at home. I'm a fun person in church. At home, I tell jokes. In church, I tell jokes. Come on, at home, I'm loving. In church, I'm loving. Right? But watch this. Some folks can't praise God because their children are watching. And now they're wondering, who is this? Is this the daddy I see at home who's cussing mama out? You know, him and mama are smoking blunts at home. But in, in church, they're praising God. They got, you know, hands raised, but at home got a, a blunt raised. Now listen, oh God, my count going down, Jesus. Listen, don't fall into condemnation. Into condemnation, all right. What God wants to do is restore us, right? Because God wants us to live that abundant life. 
but the enemy is trying to destroy, watch this, the next generation. Now, I'd be remiss if I said, as a pastor, I did everything right. Oh, dear God, I got a whole history of some stuff I did wrong. Oh, man, listen, if I told you everything I did wrong, you would say, Pastor, you got nerves telling me about what I did. Pastor, you don't qualify. Guess what? Sometimes I think I don't qualify. But guess what? God qualified me. God chose me. Right? And whom God qualifies, he justifies. Whom God justifies, he glorifies. And so don't blame me. God chose me. And guess what? God chose you too. And just like Pastor Larry, God wants us to get our act together. Right? Why? So you and I can win the world and get past these obstacles and begin to live the abundant life that the world may see Christ in us, right? And when they see Christ in us, they all want to know the Savior that we serve. Y'all, and guess what? I'm over time because my time is all gone. Come on, y'all. Y'all blessed tonight. Come on. Come on. If you were, give me some hearts, some love, some likes. I pray you were. Now, listen, I realize when the, when the word hits you, just say, ouch, repent, and keep moving. But I pray tonight's word, bless your life for the better. Woo! Y'all, I done preached myself happy. And I also preach myself to repentance. Because, listen, we've all missed God somewhere in our life. Listen, let's get together, y'all, all right? And let's win the world for God. In this last season, in these last days, Let's win the world for Jesus Christ. Listen, if this word has blessed you at all, I pray that you would consider uh, sowing into our ministry. I believe by the Spirit of God, this is good ground. And so they'll give you our information. It'll be on the screen. Please, ma'am, please, sir, feel free to sow into this ministry. Every dime you give goes into the building and the furthering of us getting out this gospel into all the world. All right, y'all, I got to go. Call me, 773-785-0412 or 708-821-6527. All right, shoot me an email, momentsintheword99 at gmail.com. All right, y'all, got to get out of here. As we always say, you stay in faith and stay focused and know that God has you in the palm of his hand. We love you so much. God bless you. All right, big hugs. Tonight I pray sweet rest in your life and those in your household. God bless you. I love you. We'll see you here on Friday night right here for Sunday School. God bless you. We out. Hold it, hold it. Cut the music. 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 I want to wish Lady Sergeant a happy birthday. Can you all please in the chat room help me wish Lady Carol tomorrow morning a happy birthday? Come on. I need everybody that can. There you go. Come on. In the chat room, can you all please wish Lady Carol a happy birthday? I almost forgot. Thank God. Come on, family, come on. When I'm finished, y'all, I'm done. Can you all please wish Lady Sarden a happy birthday? Thank you all so much for your love. Come on, give us some love. Give us some likes, some hearts. Come on. Come on, y'all. Give Lady Carol some love, will you? Thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you all so much. I appreciate you all doing Pastor Larry that favor. All right. If you're on Facebook tomorrow morning, make sure you all give us some love tomorrow. All right. But wherever you are, whatever you're doing, as a matter of fact, go on uh, Facebook tonight and give us some love tonight in case tomorrow morning you forget. All right. As a favor to Pastor Larry. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, y'all.
Love y'all. Got to get out of here. God bless. Good night.